that everybody is there, we can start. Okay. Page 144. This then is a true relation. So we have to start from at the same time, no? No. No. This then, as Rangada told. Yeah. This then, okay. So, everybody ready? One of you read the para. Shall I read Rangada? Yes, please. This then is the true relation between divine and human knowledge. It is not a separation into disparate fields, sacred and profane. That is the heart of the difference, but the character of the consciousness behind the work. All is human knowledge that proceeds from the ordinary mental consciousness interested in the outside or upper layers of things, in process, in phenomena, for their own sake or for the sake of, the, of some surface utility or mental or vital satisfaction of desire or of the intelligence. But the same activity of knowledge can become part of the yoga if it proceeds from the spiritual or spiritualizing consciousness, which seeks and finds in all that it surveys or penetrates the presence of the timeless eternal and the ways of manifestation of the eternal in time. It is evident that the need of a concentration indispensable for the transition out of the ignorance may make it necessary for the seeker to gather together his energies and focus them only on that which will help the transition and to leave aside or subordinate for the time all that is not directly turned towards the one object. He may find that this or that pursuit of human knowledge with which he was accustomed to deal by the surface power of the mind still brings him by reason of this tendency or habit out of the depths to the surface or down from the heights which he has climbed or is nearing to lower levels. These activities then may have to be intermittent or put aside until secure in a higher consciousness he is able to turn his powers on all the mental fields. Then, subjected to that light or taken up into it, they are turned by the transformation of this consciousness into a province of the spiritual and divine. All that cannot be so transformed or refuses to be part of a divine consciousness, he will abandon without hesitation, but not from any preconceived prejudgment of its unfitness or its incapacity to be an element of the new inner life. There can be no fixed mental test or principle for these things. He will therefore follow no unalterable rule, but accept or repel an activity of the mind according to his feeling, insight or experience, until the greater power and light are there to turn their unerring scrutiny on all that is below and choose or reject their material out of what the human evolution has prepared for the divine labor. Yeah. So, <laughs> he's talking of the ascent of sacrifice. And in that ascent of sacrifice, he is discussing the karma yoga. So what are the works that we have to do and what are the works that we have not to do? Okay, that is the... But finally he says that everything can be done just as the Gita also says. Every action in the physical world can be made spiritual. We don't need to make a, a distinction between non-spiritual works and spiritual works. Everything can be spiritualized. This is basically the message of what he's saying in the para, but he's saying it in a very interesting way and we'll look at all the different variations and subtleties that he's talking about. So, this then is a true relation between divine and human knowledge. Human knowledge, our mathematics, our physics, our history, our psychology, all this is human knowledge. All scientific pursuits, biology, medicine, physiology, what not, what you have, you, everything, all this is human knowledge. And divine knowledge, knowing the fundamental principles of the universe, okay, <clears throat> and the divine. So, this is the difference. So, it is not as 
separation into disparate fields. We don't have to make a distinction between profane works and sacred works. He has used the word profane and sacred, secular and religious. We don't need to make that distinction. Everything can be done depending on your attitude. That's what he will describe. Sacred and profane. Profane usually uh, has a negative connotation, but here he is not using in a very negative connotation. He is saying uh, more neutral. Okay, it is so. <clears throat> He is saying that we don't need to make a distinction between spiritual works and non-spiritual works. For instance, we normally have an idea that if I go to a temple or if I bow down to a photograph, it is spiritual work. But if I play football or I play, I do crossword puzzle, <laughs> it is not a divine work. Okay, or I go to the market to buy things for myself, it is not the same. They saying, and Gita also says, no, everything can be made part of the divine life by remembering the divine and offering what you are doing to him. Okay, so that's what he's saying. Now, it is profane, profane exact meaning can you say? Pardon? Profane. Ah. Okay. The word profane is actually it is non-spiritual, okay, hmm. non-religious, but it can also have a, a too negative a meaning, okay. Profane means vulgar, dirty, okay? Mm. When you use bad words, it's profane language. It can mean that also. Okay. But normally here, Sarabha is not meaning in that way, but it's meaning not religious or not spiritual. Even not religious is profane. He's using in that sense, okay? Mm. So, <clears throat> so <clears throat> sacred or profane. No, opposite of sacred if you want. <laughs> because mm. sacred... Yeah, tell me. No, no, what you said? No, I my connection is not very good. Um, what did you say at the end? I said profane huh. uh, can be, uh, there can be two meanings. One is not religious, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it can also mean something a little more negative, something even mm -hmm. towards dirty, you know, something oh. which bad language when you use is profane language. Don't use profane language. Okay, mm. dirty words. And so it can go to that extent also, but normally here Srinandu is using in the sense of non-religious. Okay, sacred. Okay. And, so you can say sacred and not profane are opposites. That okay. which is not sacred, that mm. which you for yourself or very ordinary works. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like playing football or going to the market to buy you know, something for yourself or even for others, but you are not remembering the divine. But everything can be done by remembering the divine and offering. So, mm -hmm. it is not a separation into disparate fields, sacred and profane. That is the heart of the difference. But the character of the consciousness behind the working. Okay? If you are even doing a crossword puzzle, if you remember the divine and tell them that Help me to solve it. Even that is something. It's selfish. But even then, <laughs> and you can do it even without selfishness. You can do it as a, an intellectual exercise. I am offering this to you and I am trying to do it. Okay. <laughs> it's very, very simple. But the, there are so many grades and grades of consciousness. Okay. You can do it for yourself, but you can remember the divine. You can do it for the divine by remembering him and not for yourself. There are so many different grades. Okay. So, behind the, the character of the consciousness behind the working. Even when you are playing or you are you going to the playground and that's exactly what we do in the school also. Just a short meditation with some music to remember mother and offer your studies to her or offer your physical education, whatever you are doing, mass drill or gymnastics or whatever, you are praying to her. In the beginning, it can be a little selfish also. You can say, I'm going to do gymnastics and parallel bars, but protect me. It can be a little selfish, but that selfishness can be removed also. And you say, I'm offering all my activities to you. No demand. Okay. <laughs> and demand also, there are so many grades. Huh? When the demand of a child for its mother and insistence, that, ah, you do this for me, do that for me. There's an innocence in it. So there are so many grades. Even demands can be sometimes 
um, an element of purity can come into the demand of a child na no? asking his mother to do something <laughs> there is a desire in it no doubt but still it is innocent but when you do it with an arrière pensée okay with an intention and a motive a very selfish motive then the demand is not valid at all in spiritual life so this is what sri vidya is saying now i go to the next one all is human knowledge that proceeds from the ordinary mental consciousness interested in the outside or upper layers of things in process in phenomena for their own sake or for the sake of some surface utility or mental or vital satisfaction of desire or of the intelligence so sam is describing what is human knowledge very interesting let's look at all the words very carefully okay all human knowledge is that which proceeds from an ordinary mental consciousness and what is ordinary mental consciousness is defining that which is interested in the outside or upper layers of things even outside or upper layer of things okay you are interested in the <clears throat> suppose you are repairing a motorcycle okay you are concentrating on the mechanism of the motorcycle that's the outside okay or the upper layer of things slightly even at a higher level you are thinking of raising it slightly above but even in the lower there are layers there is the lowest there is the lower there is the middle and there is a higher in your attitude and your interest in things in process in the actual process of things when you are trying to as i said you are trying to repair a uh, motorcycle you are thinking oh you are thinking what is the mechanism that is there in the process of things okay <coughs> in the sequence of things also they very often you have to think of a sequence you have to see where things have gone wrong and you identify i remember very interestingly mm, an incident which stuck in my mind okay uh, in 1980 we were in the press and the whole method of composition when uh, in the press we composed letters na so it changed from metal metal types to photo composition okay computers now it is become so common you just type on a computer and you get your text and that you can do whatever you want with the text but that time it was new and one of the machines had failed and there was this boy kumar you know kumar is um, arjun talreja's uh, brother no arjun talreja's uh, no son son correct correct son sundar's brother yeah sundar's brother correct they had another brother also a very intelligent boy very intelligent and he had come and they were analyzing okay what had gone wrong with the machine and <clears throat> i'm telling you about process okay so there was a boy from uh, from germany in orville and he also had come and he could not solve the problem but kumar said very clearly the problem is such in such a place so that german fellow was very surprised and said how do you know and he gave a very good explanation which stunned the german okay so this is a process you know what is coming first what is coming second what is coming third so you go to the source so you are looking into the process see how precise he is with his words the process of things okay but, but when you are doing the process of things you are not thinking of the divine <laughs> you are thinking of the mechanism okay so so clearly then in phenomena okay for their own sake suppose you are planting you are a farmer and you are planting a uh, trees or you want to make uh, grafts then what is the how do you do that so that is a phenomena in the actual event how to do it okay so for their own sake not for the sake of the divine for their own sake or for the sake of some surface utility not for the for society or for yourself but some surface utility very ordinary you do something okay or mental and vital satisfaction so when you are doing something in the physical world you can have mental satisfaction i have done this or you can have a vital satisfaction and that satisfaction can be of desire or of even intelligence na no? when you can solve a problem mathematical problem you get satisfaction but that is of intelligence 
But suppose you <laughs> want to eat something and you manage to get it. Okay. Sometimes you don't manage to get what you want, but when you manage to get it, it's a vital satisfaction. So look at Shyamdas' language, so precise, and all the shades of the satisfaction he is giving you. It can be desire satisfaction, it can be intelligence satisfaction. Okay. There are so many different, but even then, it is not spiritual. That's what he's saying. So long as you are confined to the outside, the surface, and satisfying only your vital and your mental. And even body, you are satisfying your body also. There is no, it is not a spiritual action. Okay, so then he is saying, but the same activity, that same thing that you are doing, whether you are doing a crossword puzzle or whether you are um, repairing a, a bike or you are going to the market for buying things, same action. Okay, activity of knowledge. But he is talking of knowledge. I am talking of other things, but knowledge. Okay, knowledge means all our Mental pursuits, as I said, history, philosophy, science, physics, mathematics, these are all activities of knowledge, okay? can become part of the yoga if it proceeds from the spiritual or spiritualizing consciousness. So even if you are not spiritual yet, but you are trying to do it, spiritualizing consciousness, even when you are not fully spiritual, that also can be made part of the yoga. Okay? See how Shrimda includes always all the different shades. A spiritual consciousness, you have attained to the realization of your soul. Spiritualizing, you are on the path. Even that can become part of yoga, which seeks and finds in all that it surveys or penetrates the presence of the timeless eternal. The timeless eternal is God, if you want a very simple word. And the ways of manifestation of the eternal in time. So you are trying to either go to the, uh, the level of God or you are thinking how he is acting in the physical world. Everything in the physical world you are relating to the divine. Okay, He is manifesting himself in the divine. So the moment you remember mother, very simply, the moment you remember mother, the yoga can start. But if you are doing it without remembering the mother, it is not a yogic activity. That's what they is saying. Okay. <laughs> Spiritualizing consciousness which seeks and finds in all that it surveys, it penetrates the presence of the timeless eternal. Okay. Involve the divine in everything that you do, the ways of manifestation of the eternal in time. Okay. And this is, we don't normally think of it, but if you are coming out of your house and going to knowledge or going to dispensary or going for your to the department for work, in the road, you just remember the divine and think if you are using a scooter, think that mother is sitting with you and going along with you. So everything can be made into a part of the <laughs> spiritual life. That's what he's saying. Okay? It is evident that the need of concentration, indispensable for the transition out of the ignorance may make it necessary for the seeker to gather together his energies and focus them only on that which will help the transition and to leave aside or subordinate for the time all that is not directly turned towards the one object. What is the one object? The divine, God if you want. Okay. So those activities which you find difficult to associate with the divine, those you can temporarily give up. That's what Sandhya is going to tell you. Those which are easier, very good. You can do it. He may find. Who is the he? The sadhak. Okay. They make it necessary. Seeker. The word in the text is seeker. He is a seeker. He may find that this or that pursuit of human knowledge. Again, he is stressing very clearly. Human knowledge, the lower one. Okay with which he was accustomed to deal by the surface power of the mind, okay, the surface power of the mind, intelligence, still brings him by reason of this tendency or habit out of the depths to the surface or down from the heights which he has climbed or is nearing to lower levels. So he may find that some activities are pulling him outwards. So those you can give up. Temporarily, that's what he's saying. 
these activities then may have to be intermittent may have to be not necessarily everything can be turned intermittent or put aside intermittent for the time being you suspend the activity or put aside slightly more uh, positive for longer periods secure in a higher consciousness in he is able to turn its powers powers about the mind and the surface activity on all the mental fields he is able to turn the remembrance of the divine into everything and if some you find difficult you can suspend it temporarily then subjected to that light or taken up into it for our sake we can say what is that light remembrance of mother is light to begin with okay just remember and taken up into it they are turned who are the they the difficult works that you are finding difficult to associate with the divine they are turned by the transformation of his consciousness into a province of the spiritual and divine now the word province is very interesting province is not the nation okay the nation would be god and the province is one part of human activity which is being turned towards the divine Province of the spiritual and divine. All that cannot be so transformed or refuses to be a part of the divine consciousness, he will abandon without hesitation, but not from any preconceived prejudgment of its unfitness or its incapacity to be an element of the new inner life. You must not think that this activity is not possible to change. but in the beginning that is necessary remember there are rules in ashram no politics no smoking no drinking and no sex these are the rules okay but sembe is making a very clear statement that everything can be made part of the divine life i won't go into too many details i leave it for you to work it out but everything all these things can be made part of the divine life okay <laughs> all that cannot be so transformed or refuses to be part of a divine consciousness he will abandon without hesitation but don't think that this is not possible therefore i am giving it up it is possible but it is your weakness which you are not being able to turn that activity into a spiritual action but not from any preconceived judgment of its unfitness okay? or its incapacity to be an element of a new inner life there are many people who say if you want a spiritual life you have to give up the physical world that exactly is what sambhu and the gita is saying not necessary at all everything can be made there can be no fixed mental test or principle for these things you cannot decide by the mind that this is spiritual action and this is not spiritual action you can't decide everything can be made he will therefore follow no unalterable rule don't make strict rigid rules for yourself but accept or repel any activity of the mind according to his feeling insight or experience until the greater power and light are there to turn their unerring scrutiny on all that is below and choose or reject their material out of what the human evolution has prepared for the divine labor depending on your state of consciousness you have to reject certain things and accept certain things that's what he saying discrimination is necessary i remember one incident uh, it was uh, nagin bhai nagin doshi okay he was a brother of shanti da and they uh, shanti da used to be our french teacher okay so nagin doshi was his brother and he used to write to sir do so when surrender question came up he wrote to sir do now i understand that i don't desire anything but if anything comes by itself i will accept happily as though it's coming from the divine <laughs> and sir do said certainly not someone comes and gives you a bottle of scotch will you think it's coming from the divine you have to reject it you have to have discrimination that discrimination is what he is talking about in the last few lines here okay you have to have discrimination something you have to reject is some things you don't have to reject but activity mental activity so i'm speaking of mental activity ranga ranga yeah tell me yeah yeah 
mentally mm-hmm. mentally discrimination when there are so many reasons you can reason out of anything right so it is basically the sincerity which that tells you what to do and not absolutely and that sincerity also is graded in the beginning the sincerity is never very mother very clearly say sincerity is not perfect in the beginning at all because we are in ignorance we are in darkness but you yes. try best that's why the sentence which says always act at the height of your consciousness that is so meaningful you have got so many things but however ignorant you are you do the best you can according to your which is the highest value use that it may be very imperfect but slowly it will take you higher and higher okay so that's it sincerity is the key but even that sincerity is not absolutely available to you always na so so this is what he is saying in the, there can be no fixed mental test of principle of these things he will therefore follow no unalterable rule okay as i said sometimes you can tell a lie with a good intention it's better not to do that but if circumstances demand it you are very uh, conscience is clear i am telling a lie so that the good comes out of it okay or you can tell the truth with a bad intention okay you know that somebody has done something wrong and you have the knowledge of that others don't have the knowledge and when there is an enquiry you reveal what the person has done with the intention that he should suffer okay you are telling the truth but you are inten- so the activity itself does not matter but the consciousness behind the attitude behind is that what matters so apply this to everything the consciousness behind the act is what matters that makes all the difference between spiritual action and a non spiritual action you can also <clears throat> destroy without any anger and without any hate you can destroy so that is not a bad action it is something which is to be done or i can even there is a famous so many examples you steal stealing is not a good thing but you don't do it stealing for yourself you are stealing so that you can give a poor man some bread you don't have yourself so you have to steal even that is not wrong morally okay so there are so many different things so sir is saying very clearly no, no unalterable rule yes tell me no no you this did also use that no he was the one who never told a lie ah that's right that's an absolute rule but then he said narova kunjarova because he he didn't want to lie but <laughs> yeah yeah so so but, what do you what do you think that is no i didn't follow what you said no no you just say he never ah. told a lie yes, so I that's should. why when he was asked that yeah. uh, did uh, he die then he said narova kunjarova ashwatthama then yeah. he said that narova kunjarova that's right half so yeah half to so that is considered as what it is a half lie na huh? because there is a motive behind <laughs> and mm. the, the motive behind is what matters na huh? his motive was to mislead the opposition na huh? <laughs> mm. yeah so <laughs> Yes, but not Arya's son, right? Okay. But Ranga, the misleading for the sake of the divine working—that is, that is allowed, no? Uh, but can you mislead the divine? No, not the divine. But he was on the side of the of Krishna, no? In that's in why it's a, that is why it's a half lie. <laughs> that's so why it is. It is. It is permitted. It is permitted at that level. At the at level. level you are. <laughs> the level is very interesting so many different things are there na in uh, in the synthesis of yoga we will come to a chapter which is the um, it's called the standards of conduct 180 pages another 40 pages we will come to that very interesting chapter there are so many standards of conduct okay and each standard is valid at its own level I'll give you a very simple example. Okay, an animal is killing another animal and eating it. Do you find fault with it? No. So at that level, 
that action is perfectly valid. Okay, then you come to the human being. Can he kill somebody else? No, you can't. Values have changed. So values are there at every level. Okay? At your human level, telling lies and not lies is you have to have certain rules. But when you go to the higher level, you can tell a lie with a good intention or you can even steal with a good intention. Half. It's not absolutely total. It's, the rule cannot be unalterable. That's what he's saying. OK. So, you have to have a lot of flexibility in the mind to understand. When we read that uh, standards of conduct, we will understand how there are different st states. That is the reason why Sirono says in the, the mother, he says, a mental man will never understand mother's way of acting. Okay. Sometimes she seems to act in a, a very, very humanly wrong way, but you will never understand that because they are, they are not no unalterable rule for spiritual conduct. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you remember also the Gita, you will understand immediately. Sarva Dharman Parityajya. Give up all human values. Okay. And depend on me alone. Okay. So that's the thing. Okay. So 8.25. We've got 10 minutes. Shall we read the next one? It's one and a half yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah, we can read it. Yeah, shall I read? Yeah. <clears throat> How precisely or by what stages this progression and change will take place must depend on the form, need and powers of the individual nature. In the spiritual domain, the essence is always one, but there is yet an infinite variety and at any rate in the integral yoga, the rigidity of a strict and precise mental rule is seldom applicable. For even when they walk in the same direction, no two natures proceed on exactly the same lines in the same series of steps or with quite identical stages of their progress. It may, be, it may yet be said that a logical succession of the states of pro progress would be very much in this order. First, there is a large turning in which all the natural mental activities proper to the individual nature are taken up or referred to a higher standard standpoint and dedicated by the soul in us, the psychic being the priest of the sacrifice to the divine service. Next, there is an attempt at an ascent of the being and a bringing down of the light and power proper to some new height of consciousness gained by its upward effort into the whole action of the knowledge. Here, there, are, there may be a strong concentration on the inward central change of the consciousness and an abandonment of a large part of the outward going mental life, or else its relegation to a small and subordinate place. At different stages, it, it or parts of it may be taken up again from time to time to see how far the new inner psychic and spiritual consciousness can be brought into its movements. But that compulsion of the temperament or the nature, which in human beings necessitates one kind of activity or another and makes it seem almost an indispensable portion of the existence, will diminish and eventually no attachment will be left, no lower compulsion or driving force felt anywhere. Only the divine will matter. The divine alone will be the one need of the whole being. If there is any compulsion to activity, it will be not that of implanted desire or of force of nature, but the luminous driving of some greater consciousness force, which is becoming more and more the sole motive power of the whole existence. On the other hand, it is possible at any period of the inner spiritual progress 
that one may experience an extension rather than a restriction of the activities. There may be an opening of new capacities of mental creation and new provinces of knowledge by the miraculous touch of the yoga shakti. Aesthetic feeling, the power of artistic creation in one field or many fields together, talent or genius of literary expression, a faculty of metaphysical thinking, any power of eye or ear or hand or mind power may awaken where none was apparent before. The divine within may throw these latent riches out from the depths in which they were hidden or a force from above may pour down its energies to equip the instrumental nature for the activity or the creation of which it is meant to be a channel or a builder. But whatever may be the method or the course of development chosen by the hidden master of the yoga, the common culmination of this stage is the growing consciousness of him above as the mover, decider, sharper of all the movements of the mind and all the activities of knowledge. That last sentence. last sentence I'm reading again. But whatever may be the method, the course of development chosen by the hidden master of the yoga, the common culmination of this stage is the growing consciousness of him alone, the divine, as a mover, decider, and shaper. Okay? He's shaping all your movements. All the movements of the mind and all the activities of knowledge. That is a very interesting para, and there are many, many interesting details. We can't do that today because he is talking of so many different things. But basically, what he is saying in this is that there are no rules in spiritual life. But I can say one thing that there is a sequence, a very simple, and that sequence is best uh, expressed by Srivato in this. First, bring the right forward. Okay. What he calls a triple transformation. Once you, get the, once you get the psychic forward, then you are on very safe ground. So the psychic coming forward is a horizontal movement. You go deep into yourself horizontally. You don't climb up. Okay. Second is you go up. When you go horizontally into yourself, you are on safe ground. The psychic comes forward and automatically decides what is right and wrong for you. You don't have to think. It tells you this vibration is wrong. That vibration is right. Even your friendship with certain people, it will tell you this is the wrong person to associate with. This is the right person to associate with. I'll go into details next time. Mother encourage certain relationships. Okay. Even between uh, men and women. Okay. She said, yes, this relationship is good for you. And some she discouraged and said, this is not the right thing for you. Okay, So <clears throat> some people are still living, so I won't give living examples, but there are certain things which people have gone away and I can tell their names also, how mother encouraged certain relationships. So no absolute rule, except that there is a sequence which is very, very safe. First, psychic transformation. Second, rise out of your body, mind, life and vertically go up to the higher mind and the self, okay, the Brahman consciousness. Then you will see that your consciousness is changing, keep climbing and finally you end up with the supramental or at least towards it, okay, and then you will see that divine is the only thing that matters. This is what basically he is saying, but he is saying very, very interesting things on the way, okay. So what happens on the way? I can tell you only one thing because we have got two, two minutes more. He used Savitri as a, as a test for the level at which he was there. Okay, So he, every time his consciousness rose up, he rewrote Savitri. Okay? <laughs> You'll be surprised. The, but he, was, he can't rewrite the whole thing because towards the end of his life he was writing the last things of him. Um, but the first canto of book one, the opening of Savitri, he rewrote, you, I think I've told you this before, but I'm just telling you, 50 times, five zero. 
<laughs> and all these um, these versions are there in the archives. Okay, five zero five times zero. Why? Why did that? He was testing it as a the the level of consciousness that is there. You reach how it makes a difference in the physical world. So he was testing it through poetry, <laughs> but we can test it in many other ways, provided we manage to get to that level. Okay, so this is what. And now we have got only one minute. Then there is another thing he is mentioning, and that also I'll just mention briefly. We'll do this uh, paragraph next time in detail. He says that when you go to the spiritual level, okay, things which are latent in you, okay, they start opening up. I'll give you two examples. Sirendra himself says that there was poetry in him, there was the intellectual knowledge in him. All this was there in him, but he was not philosophical. He says, "I never, never, never was a philosopher." But when the opportunity came, and uh, uh, Paul Richard suggested that we start a magazine called the Arya, Sirendra said, "Okay, a yogi should be able to turn his mind to anything." So he started Life Divine Philosophy. Okay. But he says I never was a philosopher. I was only a poet. So new capacities can develop in you. Okay. And another example, he had no idea of graphic arts. Okay. Color, hue, composition. Okay. Mass. All these things which belong to the graphic arts, painting or sculpture or even architecture. You can consider that a graphic art. Okay. He had no idea at all. But when he was in prison. Suddenly, these things opened up in him, and he understood all about what the technique is and what is the secret of painting and uh, sculpture and all. Suddenly, it opened up in him, and he has mentioned that in, uh, in uh, Life Divine Philosophy. He has mentioned that. I'll give you another instance also about Raman Maharshi. Raman Maharshi he was at the age of 16. He stopped his education. He was in Madurai in the American College. And he had just a smattering of English and Tamil and all. But when he, at the age of 16, he gave up all this and went away to Tiruvannamalai. And there he sat on the. And at that age, he was uh, going on, going on, meditating day and night, day and night. Finally, when he got the self and he realized uh, the Brahman consciousness, suddenly things started opening out in him. Okay. Sanskrit, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, all this poetry he was understanding and interpreting. So there, somebody asked him, "You have your education stopped at that level? How is all these things coming?" Then he said that when you go to the Brahman consciousness, all the things that are latent in you start getting manifested. So that's what I'm saying towards the end. Okay, so we'll go into detail next time. I've gone beyond the time limit.